Hey, this is Phoenix. Today is a comic review, event review, crossover review um, of Batman, Catwoman, Gotham War, which is a five-part event. Oh, sorry, six, but the technically the, the first and last part don't have a part number, so, you know, what are you going to do? They're their own one-shots. Um, so let's just go with it. Uh, I made a book. Sorry, I made a review of the first three issues on my channel. So if you want to know about just the individual issue stuff of those, you I can, you know, I'll put a link. For now, though, this is going to be like an overview. I'm not really going to go issue by issue. Just my overall thoughts and opinions. Um, sorry if it's a bit ranty. I'm not really writing anything down. It's just um, off the top of my head. So, yeah. First off, to all the just haters right now of, like, just Batman. like, And when I mean haters, I'm directly talking about either the people who are reading the book or are not reading the book and simply just hate on, like, the Batman run. To be honest, the Batman run has been hated on for a very long time. I think. When you, th uh, Tom King to now, every writer so far, there, there's been ups and downs. Tom King, I guess, all the way down. But that's not my opinion. I love it. And then you had uh, James, tying the fourth. And his run was like 30 issues. It had like two events, cross uh, event, crossover, whatever. Um, Gotham being destroyed multiple times. And his writing's not bad. I don't prefer it in that title. Um, his detective run was 10 times better. Um, it was more Bat family centric. Then from there, it had a four issue little stint with uh, Joshua Williamson. And then from after that was Chip last uh, July of 2022. Right now, um, as of the recording of this, Batman 139 is already out. So it's already past Gotham War. I I don't know it's hard to say like why Gotham War because the first video I put out was like meh with a question mark this one I don't know maybe a double question mark cuz by the end of reading it um the last book was it Batman Catwoman Gotham War Scorched Earth something like that sorry if I got that wrong uh it ended off like just you know, it was it was meh. Um, none of it I hated though. That's the funny part. Like, I guess you could say meh is sometimes even worse than just hated. Like, say hated, you can really talk about meh was just borderline boring to an extent. And I don't mean like the actual writing. The writing for me wasn't bad. Besides the first, that first uh, one shot. Um between both authors of the event, which is Chip Zdarsky and Teeny Howard on Catwoman, uh, the Battle Lines book. One, it looked bad, and two, the writing was pretty crappy. It didn't feel like the characters. Um, I think it was Hawthorne who did the the first one shot, and now the last one shot. I Let me rephrase bad. It's not what it should be. It's the wrong art for what those books are. Because then when you get into the... the the main parts of the books, like from Batman to Catwoman, Batman to Catwoman, part two, three, four, and five. It's um, Jorge Menes and the Batman one. I forget who's on the Catwoman one, but the Catwoman one doesn't look bad either. So, different artists, but at least in those books, the art is um, worth reading, you know, or looking at, I should say. I uh, the, the first, like part two and three from that first original review, uh, I would say. I really liked it the beginning. I had no problem with it. I liked this like this crazy Batman like and and then they have the the Zernar plot which is all over the place but not like if it, it's more of a feeling than like an actual plot point. It's of being all over the place. It seems that you know the Batman we have right now in, in his state 
a lot of it. It's based on Zernar, you know, not being handled in his head. Batman not really believing that. And then he goes as far as, like, you know, because in, in the rest of the book, you know, Jason's on Catwoman's side of how the uh, the burglars and uh, the robbers should be in Gotham. Like, if they take, you know, from the rich and all that, you know, Robin Hood stuff. Um, except Batman sees, you know, Batman's ideology is always, you know, if you're doing bad, crime is bad, it's bad. There is no, it's, it's an absolute, actually, for Batman. Uh, but not for his team. I think that's what makes the Bat family pretty interesting compared to him like they were mo for for most part they were all taught by him and yet they all have totally different ideologies that are way separate from batman none of them are close jason is the only one that uh goes the extra mile to a different uh, opposite degree but even jason like they all see Batman's ways uh, in this book, especially as bad, going against his own family. But then you know it does a one eighty by the end, which I get. It's a it's a full, you know, from front to back, like a full narrative plot point, and it works. And now we're at a point where Zernar truly is in Batman's head, messing with him. Um, we the readers see that, but Batman doesn't really take it in and understand that. So it, it's a little, uh, it's a little. Uh, conniving? I don't know. It's a, it's t can't think of the word. It's just that the Batman we get with the Zernar, it doesn't feel as good as it maybe was meant to be presented because of this event. Because this event truly feels like a waste of time. For plot, it's like plot reasons, like background plot. It this could have been like a backup storyline to be honest, with the things that really went down, which was uh the the Vandal Savage trying to get his immortality sort of back. Not really sure if he lost it fully, but the the rocks that gave him it slowly depleting, and then you find out like Batman actually had a rock, and that was how it started. And Vandal took it from him. That plot overall, it's okay. I think I'm just it's like just too much Batman. That's sort of uh, making the story maybe worse. Than it actually is. I bet if I read this. Like in the future. A couple months from now. And look back. Like after this. I mean. Not a couple months. But maybe when Chip's. Is, Chip's run is over. Whenever that is. I will. See it with a better. Outcome hopefully. Better look into it. Perspective. Um, What else about the story. His daughter. uh, Scandal Savage. Dumb name. Thus, yeah, a different name in the new 52. I could be wrong. I'll look into that. Uh, she went by Marquise or something. I, I wasn't invested enough to really pay attention to her name. Because I wasn't really reading Catwoman. Um, they met. Uh, Catwoman and her met in a in prison. There was a prison couple of issues. If I remember, this, I think it's like some Japanese girl took over as Catwoman. But that's that's that story. It leads into this, but does it, you don't like like I said, I, I didn't read it, and I still understood this, the plot. It's just like when you have Vandal Savage involved and a meteor. Um, speaking of like, they just, they decide to get another meteor to come in for the sake of uh, like almost like all of Gotham can I guess become immortal or pseudo immortal or just super strong. In the end, it doesn't work out. They break it up. The Bat family works together. All of them, including Bruce. And then you think Catwoman's dead because she like falls it off, and they try to save her. And and but the the, the aftermath, she is fine. She's like in the shadows, you know, like going away. And Bruce goes. Like he writes off saying, like you know, the the, the Nightwing, uh, Dick Grayson can be in charge of the Bat family, just do that. But I'm like, I don't know if that's the new status quo or because I haven't read 139, I have it, but it's a the new Joker plot line and after that, it will go into a year 1 Joker storyline. So hopefully it wasn't too ranty, meant to meant to 
make this quick little review or just summary overall right now if i had to give it like a rating which i don't know if those really show how i feel but i would say like a six out of ten um it's not something right now i would ever go back to but i don't think it was like terrible like the writing itself wasn't bad for most of it that first issue though battle lines whatever uh was horrible i can say that but i don't like it was bad but compared to other people i never read a book to the point where i was like i can't fit like this is like just truly a like, garbage or some some crappy way of saying it but i knew reading that i was like this is not good um, that was the first time actually I read a comic where I was like, this is just not the best. Artwork, writing, I was like, could just be Chip and Teeny like working together. It wasn't the best like co-authorship of a storyline. Not saying Teeny Hour is bad. I don't know all her work, but anytime I hear about it, it's always negative, which sucks because, you know, like they've been doing it for a while. So I would hope, you know, the work's not too bad. I mean, it can't be. In reality, I don't think it's that bad. You don't like get to, I mean... I hope you don't get to work in this medium for that long and get so many books And if you're a terrible writer, but it, it can seem like that. But uh, that is my review. Um, my recommendation is, I guess, read it. But honestly, it doesn't really... You could go from whatever it was, like 136 to 139, and, and the summary is that um, Batman... Zer is more progressive in his head. Like, it's reaching a point, and that's really it. So it it, it could be summarized as a, as a skip, skippable, like, crossover. So but that's my review. Uh, I hope you liked it, and uh, I'll be back for another. Have a good one.